everybody, welcome back to another Pioneer gameplay video. Today we are going to play a Rakdos mid-range deck. I don't know exactly what to call it, mini reanimator. I'm sure I'll come with the name of the title, but this is going to be based off of that new village rights deck that's going around. So that deck has a lot of value going for it. It starts getting back spells with Dreadhorde, Arcanist, and it's got that young Pyromancer value. And a lot of you guys are probably not gonna like this, but I actually cut those things from my version. I cut the Dreadhorde because I felt like you know, it really needs to be a good situation. Like at, at best you're getting back or consistently you can get back a Thoughtseize, um, but it's a little harder to set up the village rights unless you have a bunch of sackables. Sometimes you don't even draw a Citrus Supplier. And then a young Pyromancer, it seems consistent, but it actually requires a little bit yet a lot of setup. The way I see Young Pyro playing in my head is that you play it, it instantly dies, and you gotta have a second one because Young Pyromancer is an absolute lightning rod for removal spells. So for it to work with Village Rights, you got to cast another spell before it and then sack the token it makes to Village Rights to get your value. I felt like it was a little too much setup, so I built my version a little bit more differently. It's a lot more aggro oriented. So one of the things that I see these decks doing that's interesting and caught my eye, which is the reason I brewed this deck today, is Arcfiend's Vessel. And Arcfiend's Vessel is sweet. They get it back with the Call of the Night Howler or whatever that card's called, and it just exiles itself and gets a 5-5 Demon. She got 5-5 Demon super easily. And I don't know why they only run a Singleton. I feel like that should be the main focus of the deck. So that is kind of what I built my version around. I could have went a lot more heavy on mini reanimation and ran Call of the Night Hoarder as well, or Night Howler. I don't remember what that card's called, but I could have ran that as well. But instead we're running Luris. Uh, like I said, our, our version is a lot more aggro oriented. So set of Luris in the main deck because that can get back the Arc Fiends Vest and you can get five five demons super cheap and you can get back stitch your suppliers and self mill yourself even more and you're gonna mill over a croxa and it's gonna be really easy to get back in this deck with all the graveyard shenanigans going on and croxa is one of the main pieces of this deck because like it's it's got the main uh disruption factor of this deck is discard we got thoughtseize croxa and then we also have claim to fame to get back the arcfiend's vessels but it can also get back the croxa get into the croxa's trigger make your opponent lose life discard cards luris can also get back the croxa make your opponent lose life and draw uh, discard cards and then once we get up to four mana it's super easy and consistent to just cast croxa from the grave so this is just a very disrupty kind of Rakdos aggro deck, I guess. That's very um, resilient to removal because it's got reanimation, scrappy scoundrels, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's try out this version of the Village Rides deck. Let's do it. And shout out to our sponsor, Mana Traders. If you're wondering how I play so much MTGO for YouTube, it is through Mana Traders. They allow you to rent decks on Magic Online for an affordable monthly fee. You can sign up in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck and try it along with us. And if you want to pick up today's deck and paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. TCGplayer.com is the number one place on the internet to buy Magic the Gathering singles. And shout outs to our supporters over on Patreon. Their names are scrolling down below. It is because of you guys this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. I am super grateful. If you would like to support on Patreon as well, link is down below. You can gain access to exclusive rewards. There's even a tier on there where you can get me to play your deck on the channel. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, so we're live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out courtesy of Mana Traders and we are playing some. Rakdos writes graveyard aggro recursion mini reanimator. I don't know exactly what you want to call it. Why does it say Luris is missing? Anyways, um, this deck is kind of like the rights deck, just minus the rights. We got Stitcher Supplier to self mill ourselves a little bit. We got Disruption and Thought Seize pushes our removal. Dreadbores more removal. Broke says more disruption that we can get back with Claim to Fame, but the main thing we're getting back to Claim to Fame with Arcfiend's Vessel to make 5-5 five, five demons. Scrappy's there just for aggro and recursion after we mill a bunch. And Luris is there to recur. Our Croxa, our Arcfiend's Vessel, our Citrus Supplier to mill more, our Scrappy Scroungers. And Wrinkle is there to make you ditch your Arcfiend's Vessel from wherever it is. Either you sacrifice it, you discard it, you get it in your grave, you get it back with Luris. You can even sack your Stitcher Supplier, and discarding cards doesn't matter. 
between Thoughtseize, reanimating Kroxa a bunch, and Rankle, your opponent is going to have no hand. We're just going to make him discard everything. And so onto the sideboard, we got a couple copies of Duress, just in case we're going up against Controller Combo, Noxious Grasp for Green Stompy, Necromentia to hit out Combo, Kalidus for Aggro, Layla into the Void against graveyard-based decks like this one. Uh, Liliana Waker of the Dead is uh, something I'm trying in replace of Chandra Torch of Defiance. Usually, you'd see people push Chandra Torch of Defiance as their control hate, but I'm trying Liliana Waker of the Dead. Because of the amount of, of hand disruption we got, Liliana's plus one is basically going to be just a lava spike to the dome and also makes them lose their card advantage, which is what you want to do against control. So I have that as my anti-control. And then another Dreadbore, just in case we're going up against Fatness or Planeswalkers. And then Kolagon's Command is our artifact disruption plus kill weenies and make them discard. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against K Beck, and we are going to be on the draw here with some Grave Demons. That's going to be a mulligan. I don't know how I feel about Triple Arc Demons Vessel. It's like we keep getting these in our opener, um, but we want them in our grave. We want to mill over them, so it's mulligan. And then we can keep getting Mana Screw today, too. Uh, this looks a lot better. Let's keep this and let's throw away a Claim to Fame. Since we got Mana Screw so much today, and that when we don't get Mana Screw, we get Mana Flooded. So, let's hope to draw some non-land cards. Heart's Desires. That's a really cool forest. I don't think I've ever seen that. It's an MTGO promo. All right, let's get a Citrus Supplier. My PC is starting to lag, actually. So, the stream's almost over, though. We've been alive for six hours. Just over six hours. And so my PC is probably heating up. Ooh, we milled over Croxa, that's good. Didn't know he was that old. Yeah, he looks young. He looks super young. Dude, I'm trading. It's great for me. We milled over two rankles, unfortunately. I would have loved to draw one of those. Another heart's desire. All right, but I have Croak said to guarantee get back on turn four. I don't have any Arc Demon's vessels. But I can get back a Scrap Heap Scrounger with Luris. That's something at least. And these mountains too. What are these basics? I've never seen them. MTGO promos are so good. They don't print them in real life. Legion War Boss. It's going to be tough to beat a, a War Boss slash Rabble Master on an empty board. Those are pretty difficult to beat. Broxa again. All right, let's go Luris. And they're forced to swing into it. So we can... Um... Oh, no, wait, they can... They, can uh, they don't have to, and they can put a counter on it, so it's a bad trade for me. But I can at least block the human if they want to attack with that. It's an APAC land. What's an APAC? A P A C. A pizza. Again, Chad. Is that what it stands for? Uh, Domri. That makes it so Luris can't block. Oh, they fought it off. Shame. Brooks is coming out, though. Asian Pacific. All right, Fable Passage, crack it, get a basic swamp. And we are getting back, Roxa. Black, red, red, black. Throw away Fable Passage, Luris, Mountain, Dragon Skull Summit. And one more. Rankle.
They ditch a game trail. Do they lose three life? Does it lose life or deal damage? Loses three life. All right. Gonna add some mana with Domri. Whoa, do they have like a Carnage Tyrant? Oh, are they just playing both of their Love Struck Beasts? Oh, Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Okay. They can kill Croaks the next turn with Chandra and Domri. Uh, Arcfiend's Vessel is cool, but I have no way to get it in the grave right now. So what are we doing? We can trigger Revolt, and we can push something. We can trigger Revolt, push the Lovestruck Beast, and force him to double block with the human in the war boss, which I'm pretty sure they would take that trade. Or they're just going to chump with their human token and keep their Chandra alive. And then in which case they will... Oh, but they can't, they can't even attack with Lovestruck Beast because Domri shuts it down. That's a synergy I always thought that, that I didn't like about those decks. Um, I could deal with the War Boss and then I can trade off my Kroxa for their Lovestruck Beast. And then I'll be able to get the Kroxa right back. Um, that's probably what I do, right? So, Fable Passage, crack it. Get a Swamp. Push War Boss. Attack Chandra. It'll let me. I don't want Domri to die, because if Domri dies, suddenly their love-struck beasts can attack. They're just letting Chandra go because they know that I can get it right back. Alright, so let's play Kroxa number two. And keep this one. Get another drain trigger. And I can get back Scrappy Scrounger, or I can just play the Vessel. Let's play the Vessel. I want to get it in my graveyard. Any thoughts on today's BNR? Um, Astrolabe was 100% correct. Um, the unbanning of Othanissa and Pioneer. I honestly forgot Othanissa was banned in Pioneer, so it doesn't really make much of an impact to me. Uh, as long as they don't unban Leyline of Abundance, we're good. But yeah, uh, it's going to be cool for the green ramp decks. So I'm happy about that. And Historic, I don't care. I don't play Historic. And Popper, it's crazy that Tron might die. Crazy. Wait. Oh, they can kill their Domri off. Oh, I forgot about that. It's lame. Didn't get a lurse. I got flooded. So if I attack here, they're forced to chum block or else they're dead. Wait, they're taking it? Yo, why are you taking it? You're dead. Chevalini, thank you so much for the follow. How are you? I just played my other Croxa from the grave, and you died to the trigger. Yo, they misplayed. Bruh. That was awkward. Sweet. Dubs Croxas for the win. Okay, well, give me Noxious Grasp. Give me... Uh, K command's not awful. I like Dreadbore. I think I'll just run these and uh, also Kalidus. Yeah, I don't need K command. 
on the draw i'm cutting scrappy scrounger they don't block and they're gonna be the aggressor so let's cut those oh actually kick command kills the the rabble and the, the legion war boss so let's bring him in um and let's cut one claim to fame and one thoughtsies in the draw because i only want one thoughtsies i don't want multiple i just want one Oh, Vanessa goes into the Kethis combo deck? I guess so, but I've never seen anybody play that deck. I've seen somebody play it once when it was a thing. And it's like not a thing anymore. But if, if the unbanning of Oath Vanessa brings that deck back, then that's cool. But you also just have Incubation. Yeah. All right, you know the drill. Push the elf. As much as I like to say that with Revolt on the Fable Passage, it slows them down, so it's worth. All right. Stitcher Supplier. We milled over Kroxa. Fable Passage, crack it, get a mountain. And uh, we can for sure get back Kroxa on turn four. You were a rug deck a while ago and I searched around. I'm liking what I see so far. Looks like you have some sweet content. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Traveloni. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. All right, let's uh, K command to deal two damage. Um, I'm gonna actually, instead of making them discard a card, I think I'm gonna get back Luris because I feel like I'm gonna need a backup. I feel like they're for sure gonna kill the first. So deal, return to your creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And kill war boss. And next turn I can get a demon with a vessel. Arcfiend's vessel. That's going to be sweet. Love struck boost. Ooh, another Kroxa. I think let's let's just get back Kroxa here because it actually blocks the Love Struck Beast. K Command Swamp Fable Passage Swamp Push. What are they discarding? They discard a forest and they lose three life. Are right, you gonna have to deal with this opponent? They can play a Domri and fight. That's what they can do. But they would lose their love struck beast. Walking Ballista X is two. Alright, that can kill my Luris. Ooh. Okay, you know what? I'm kind of tempted to just claim to fame this demon now. And I still have enough mana to play a second Kroxa. Alright, let's do it. Oh wait, can they kill it in response with Walking Ballista? Okay, it doesn't look like it. Okay, let's fame. And go to combat attack with both. We are chunking in there for a ton. And getting a uh, croaks to trigger. They lose their life and discard their last land. Yeah, they gotta deal with croaks, so you gotta double block. Bruh, you gotta double block. 
You gotta get this Krogs off the field. Dude, you have to double block. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, they're gonna shoot it with Ballista. That makes sense. All right, play a second, Kroxa. All right, get a trigger. And now I have lethal in the sky and you're in top deck mode. And not even Chandra Torture Defiance can blast this demon. So you're going to have to top deck Fry. If you have a sideboard Fry, you're going to need this Fry right now. It's a land and that doesn't do it. Yes. I mean, given our opponent did kind of misplay in the first game. But we still got it, and I'll take... We take those. We take those here. Especially after all that's happened today. We definitely take those. GG. Got a game here against Natur. We won the die roll. Going to be in the play here with some Rakdos Graveyard Demons. And that is going to be a keep, although it's kind of awkward. It's kind of just like... Play these two one-drops and then just wait to get up to four mana for Wrinkle. But double wrinkle, got the backup one. The first wrinkle always dies. It usually gets in one surprise hit and then proceeds to die. That's what how that's how wrinkle goes. I milled over Scrap Heap Scrounger, something I can eventually get back. Oh no, don't be blue eye control. Ain't nobody wanna go up against blue eye control. Ooh, claim to fame. I'm just gonna claim that Scrap Heap Scrounger back to stay aggressive. And I can even aftermath it after that. I wish I had one more mana to cast uh, Fame. I, not, I gotta hit my fourth land as well, so please deck don't whiff. It's a nice card, always relevant. It's plus one life gain. And the minus two buff is huge. Yeah, it's like Gavany's on his minus, which is not bad at all. I like it a lot. That was good too. I was thinking I was gonna draw Arcane's Vessel. Like I said, I'm low key kind of psychic. I swear, I, I swear, I was thinking that in my head. I'm low key kind of psychic. So it looks like it is blue eye control. Unfortunately, this is gonna be annoying, especially when we get mana screwed against them. If we get mana screwed, don't jinx it. Gotta hit my fourth land on curve here to be actually doing good stuff. Please. Please. Yes. All right, fetch for a mountain. Wrinkle. It resolves. Attack with everything. Azurius Charms Rankle. Okay, but they go to five here. Sword of Blue Players and Hating Fun returns with a vengeance. I know, right? Hashtag ban blue. Too broken. It's like we have uh, the deck green white hate bears because they're bears that hate out the meta. However, blue white control should just be called should just be called fun haters. Blue white fun hate. All right, get get wrinkle back out. Absorb. Imagine if I didn't do anything. I can get them to one here, but imagine if I didn't do anything and they would have died to this combat damage. They're going to have to sweep us here. 
I really hope they verdict so I can just untap and play another wrinkle. Just don't fumigate. Actually, yes, fumigate, because wrinkle can do the minus one life and draw a card. I, I, every single time in a situation like this, I always fear settle the wreckage. Oh, they're scooping it up. They didn't find it. Oh, yes. We beat Fun Hater. But we're going to sideboard. And against control, give me Kolagon's Command, Dreadbore, Liliana, uh, and uh, Duress. Cut Fatal Push. I have a feeling they're going to have Rest in Peace. So maybe I should bring in at least a couple Necromanchas, but what am I going to cut? Because I really don't know what I should cut. I like everything I got here. Maybe I don't need so many Dread Boars, and maybe the Kolagon's commands are super iffy. It's just like three mana discard a card. Yeah, maybe I could just attack Planeswalkers. Maybe I don't need Dread Boar. Okay, let's try that and hope they don't have the turn two rest in peace so that I can Necromancia it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Pretty solid. You smell like a turn two rip. Oh, you smell a turn two. Like, I, when I first saw that sentence, I thought, I thought it said, I smell like tri-tip. Um, but a turn two rip. Come on, don't have it, don't have it, don't have it, don't have it, please. Yes, they didn't have it. Okay, let's go, Scrap Heap Scrounger. Please don't Essence Scatter, thank you. Please don't Detention Sphere. I, I bet they're just going to go to Fairy Bounce it. I reckon. Blue Eye Control, a.k.a. Hate. No, right. I get double Croaks of Trigger here if they have nothing. Steal away. I knew that was going to happen, dude. I knew it. All right, Croaks. Uh... Yield, yield. So I'm make them ditch two cards here. The Zarya's Charm goes away. Claim to fame my Kroxa. They discard a Zarya's Charm and... Wait for it. Blast Zone. Okay, cool. If they whiff their land drop, I'm happy. Oh, they did. Thank goodness. Fable Passage. Alright, Wrinkle Time. Please connect. Yay! Please connect again. Azuria Charm, seal away number two. Man, they must just hate fun. <laughs> Lol. Why can't anyone read your messages correctly? I can, it's just that, it's like, the chat's so far away from me over there that I, I'm looking way over here to see it, and so I just see things out of the corner of my eye. Like, I wish I could move the chat right here, but it's over here. I want it there, but it's right there. I can't move it here, though, because 
Streamlabs OBS, or slobs rather, is very janky and, and it's like, doesn't let you, it, it has a set template of like where everything is on the screen. And I want my chat to be on the left side because this is my right side monitor. So it's closer to my game screen, so I don't have to look so far. But unfortunately, it's a little bit too difficult for them to program. To put the chat on the left side and the screen on the right side. Super hard. There's Teferi. Croxa again. They discard another card, and it is a Sinister Sabotogi. Which is more broken, slobs or your body? Probably slobs. Slobs apparently has a lot of CPU usage. That's why I had to swap over to OBS Live, but OBS Live's been bad to me lately. But I still use slobs Hello. for streaming um, Magic the Gathering because it doesn't take a lot to stream Magic the Gathering. Dark Kryptonite 101, thank you so much for the follow. How are you? Welcome, welcome. All right, croaks of time. Exile, Claimed Fame, Another Kroxa, Fail Passage, Necromentia, and Dragon Skull Summit? No, keep the other Kroxa. Hit both of my Claim to Fames. No, I want to keep one Claim to Fame. And of course it gets countered. Ducky is a ducky. Not fun. You're wondering about that? The layer editor seems nice, but for some reason it doesn't let you move that panel around. I know, right? Like, I just, I want to click because OBS Live allows you to drag the chat. Like, I want to just click and drag this to the left side. That's all I want. It's so simple. I'm getting flooded. And because this is not fun, I kind of just want to concede. Even though I have a legit chance, I kind of just want to concede because it's not fun. Like, the game's going way too long. And, you know, if this middle game's not long and then the last one, or the middle game's long and the last one isn't, I'm probably going to have to have this non sped up in the video. And it's like obnoxious because Blue Way Control takes so long. It takes so long, every single time. Baru. Baru ducks. Come on, no more lands, I'm getting flooded. Oh my goodness, I'm getting flooded. This is crazy. I agree, Larry Legend. I agree. It's also today, it's like either I'm getting screwed or flooded, screwed or flooded every time. And now Big Teferi's here and this super duo controls everything. And so, yeah, this is definitely over. If I don't get like the absolute nuts here, whatever the nuts may be, like Luris, if I don't draw Luris or Rankle here, I'm just scooping. Loris, Rankle, Liliana. Yeah, like, screw it. At this point, just scooping. All right, let's go into game three, and we get to be on the play this time, which is great. You know, if I Necromentia on Teferi Hero Dominaria, maybe they just won't have a win con.
Uh, Dreadbore would have come in handy there, I'll admit. Alright, let's cut one claim to fame. Run a couple Dreadbores. Trav! Hello, long time no see. I just saw your friend request and I accepted it. I just saw it yesterday. Pandemic has ruined all your fun. Yeah, a lot can speak for that as well. Everybody's going through it. It's crazy. I haven't played Commander in so long because of Pandemic. It's crazy. So the Pandemic is Blue Eye Control? Yes. Blue Eye Control is Pandemic. Because it ruins all the fun. Okay, let's keep that. I like Double Thought Seize against Control. Void Shatter, Supreme Verdict, Slow Guide Lantern, Seal Away, Azurius Charm. I think I'm going to take Soul Guide Lantern. And then let's just get out the attacker right now. Scrap Heap Scrounger. And then I can get out Luris, and then I can proceed to Citrus Supplier, get back an Arc Demon thing, and then I can Thought Seize their Verdict. So this should be good. I expect them to Azurius Charm me here. Or like Seal Away, but it's okay. I'll accept that, because at least it's not going to Luris. Alright, get Luris out there. Shock Solid Fountain, they're leaving up Void Shatter. Alright, Thought sees you. Probably going to Void Shatter it to keep their Verdict. Finally made a Paper EDH deck. Oh, Karlov of the Ghost Cancel. I have that deck. It's uh, right here in a box. Oh wait, over there in a box. I packed it up. Um, it's really fun. It's based off a lot of individual life triggers. It's not meant to get like gain a ton of life and double your life total and gain up to like 500 life. It's meant to just get drain one, gain one, drain one, gain one. Just a bunch of little triggers to get him as big as possible. All right, now they can just freely verdict but I can get back the Scrap Heap Scrounger, and I can play another Scrap Heap Scrounger, so we can rebuild pretty quick. And here's the essence of Unfun, aka a Sweeper. Alright, let's play Scrounger, and then we'll just end a turn and get back the other Scrounger. I wish I hit a Kroxa in that pile. That would have been great. Cost a load of money too. Dang. And you can't even play it because of pandemic, huh? Don't you dare. Don't you dare settle the wreckage me, sir. Don't do it. Oh, there's my Kroxa. That's good. I know they have a seal away, so I'd be cool if they sealed away, but don't you dare have top deck to settle the wreckage. Thank you. All right. Karlov time. Or not Karlov. Kroxa. You got me saying Karlov. <laughs> 
Lands and artifacts, most of the costs, all your creatures are dirt cheap. Yeah, the creatures in that deck are dirt cheap. Um, there's nothing really inspe inspe expensive that you need in there. Because, like, everything you want is, like, a common or uncommon. It's just like, oh, drain and gain for one. Like, a bunch of that kind of stuff. Ooh, they had a shark typhoon in hand. Okay, Blast Zone. They probably don't want to hit Stitcher Supplier, so it's probably in their best interest to take it up to two. And if they take it up to two, they can kill Kroxa as well. But I have enough cards in my graveyard to get back Kroxa a second time, and I can get another trigger. And I can force them to make that move, which is what I want to do. I want to put them in a position where they have no choice but to do a certain thing. Have you tried playing VDH? What's VDH? I never heard of it. All right, they're taking it. So let's Krosa get our trigger. Black, black, red, red. Throw away Duress, Lockthwain, Mountain, Fable Passage, Swamp. So they can just take a blast on a two here. Absorb, sure. No! Lame. Now if I sit your supplier again and try to find another croak, so they're just gonna exile the thing with the soul guide lantern that's lame they only got one card left give me the goods come on rankle thank you that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking about and before top deck settle the wreckage okay it connects we are each gonna discard a card What's your last card? You are in top, ne top deck mode. I swear to goodness, if you top deck a verdict. Okay, well, they're cracking their soul guy lantern to draw a card. Oh, wait, it doesn't exile the whole graveyard? Oh, they can... That card's hecka good. They discard a field of ruin. All right, what do they keep? Man, this card's so good. I love Soul Guide Lantern. Can't believe these aren't like super expensive, like especially in foil. They just seem really good. Yeah, I don't care about Teferi because I still got lethal. What can you do for two mana besides like Fog. Island, and then tap two more. So how can you stay alive for three mana here? Instant speed. Was it like wing shards? Wing shards isn't pioneer legal. So yeah, go attacking. Come on, dude. Stop resisting. Just eat it. Just eat it. Blessed Alliance would not do it. No, I don't think anything would do it. And I think that's a concession. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. We'd be blue white. Oh my goodness. Screw that deck. It, I love the deck so much when I'm playing it, but oh man. <laughs> it is super annoying if you're an aggro deck fighting blue white control. That deck's a monster. It's so Feels so much good to take down that monster. Got a game here against Terravor 2 and we are going to be on the draw here with some Rakdos Grave Aggro. And uh, that's going to be a keep. We can self-mill a bunch with the Stitcher Suppliers. We got to hit our land drops, though, but we are running 24 lands. 
And uh, we'll be able to get back the Kroxa that we're about to mill over. Embodiment of Spring, so the opponent on just Simic Ramp. Uh, they might be on, like, um, what is the Lotus Field? Lotus Breach? That is a lot of Arc Fiend's vessels, and I don't like it. <laughs> those are supposed to be in our graveyard, and we're supposed to mill over those. Temple of Epiphany. I've seen this. I've seen somebody play a, a Teamer Embodiment of Spring deck. I wonder what it's trying to do. But it's, they're only 0 3, so I'm gonna just slam Scrap Heap's Grounder here, I think. Luris. Okay, well, Luris is good because I can like mill a bunch with Stitcher Suppliers and then I can get stuff back with Luris. Temple of Mystery. Mysterio. Sword of Card Games and Motorcycles? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, what is that? The My Chemical Romance song. Sword of Skylines and Turnstiles. That's a good one. Why am I getting so mana screwed today? So, for those who never make it to the ends of my videos, um, I do announce at the end my streaming schedule, and I stream on Monday. All the gameplay for the week I stream on Monday. So, in the last video, which was Mill, we got, like, ultra mana screwed. So, it's weird. Just today, in general, I've just been getting mana screwed, because I was in the same stream as this. So, uh, yeah, I just get mana screwed all day. It's crazy. I don't know why. Okay, they're going to crack their embodiment. They can probably declare blocks on uh, Scrappy first and then sack it. Land? Nope, it's a Kroxa. Alright, attack for five. Yep, I think I'm actually going to play uh, Arc Fiend's Vessels because they actually stick on the board. And can be attackers, and I'm trying to end the game, but I feel like I'm gonna get Star of Extinction out of nowhere because they're ramping like crazy. Sort of R and D. That's a good one. Sort of Smoke and Mirrors. Oh, I like that one. I like that one for one reason, because I'm a pyro, and there's actually some really nice canister shells called Smoke and Mirrors by Brothers, Pyrotechnics, and they're very popular, and they're definitely a better popular shell than Excals. I hit my land, yay! Oh, Risen Reef. So they're like a... Um, are they like a... Uh, what is that 4-drop guy? Master Waves deck? Oh, no, they're just using that as literally a ramp guy that chump blocks. We're definitely getting Star of Extinction here. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Sort of blue players and hating fun. That's the best one, and everybody knows it. Omnath. Okay, so it is Elementals after all, because this is an Elemental too. So just elemental ramp. Oh no, they're killing Luris, no. Okay, well I hope they block my Arc Fiend's Vessels and I hope I hit my fourth land so I can just play Luris, get back the Arc Fiend's Vessel immediately and make a demon. What was that? Domri's Ambush, okay they're getting some beef. Yes. All right, swing everything. And please block my Arc Fiend's vessels. Come on, block them. Block them. Dude, what? They have to be stream sniping. Are you kidding me? 
This person is 100% in my chat. Why? Wait, don't I have another one in here? Okay, I'm gonna play Lurus and I'm gonna get back um, Stitcher Supplier. Oh, you know what? I should have went Kroxa because I can get back Kroxa next turn if I did play it. <coughs> Don't kill Malurus. Ooh, that's a lot of elementals. Oh, this combo is so good with the Risen Reef. Because with Risen Reef, uh, this is so like, you keep on flipping lands off the top until you whiff a land. No, clear the mind. Why are you playing clear the mind? Why are you playing clear the mind? Yo, the main deck absolute counter. Oh, I like Wrinkle. Wrinkle's good. That can put my Arcfiend's Vessels in the grave. That puts my Arcane's Vessels in the grave so that I can get them back with Lurus. <laughs> so that's good. I am fine with that. Um, we're going to do each player discards a card and each player sacks a creature. That's what we're doing. And I can flashback claim to fame too. All right, discard a card, sack a creature. We're getting these Arc Fiends into our graveyard so Luris can get them back. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna throw Kroxa in the grave because I can get Kroxa back. And I'm already gonna get an Arc Fiends vessel in my grave right here. They sack Omnath probably because they have a second one in hand. Another Risen Reef. Oh man, they can just machine gun stuff off the top if they hit a land. Sit back and relax. This is going to be amazing. Yep, there's a temple and then here they go. They're going to scry first to make sure they hit a land on top. And they're just going to flood the board with elementals. But it's okay because Rankle flies over. Yeah, Master of the Ways is what I was talking about. They should know that you want the vessels to die. Yeah. He asked my friend who's playing Master of Waves in his Brago deck, and he said no because the tokens die. I reminded him that Flicker is instant and not at end of turn. The tokens don't die. Is that true? Because it goes away for a brief moment in exile, and then it comes right back. I think there is a window in which they would cease to exist because the thing technically goes into exile and comes back. And they're going off. They're hitting their lands. That's why they have so much scry lands. We've got to make sure they keep hitting lands. Are they going to, like, blow us up with some kind of combo? Are they about to, like, rubble hulk us to death or something? Blood rush rubble hulk on their risen reef? I bet you they got the new Radha in there. The one that you can pay six and pump it where for plus X plus X where X is the number of lands you control. Either that or they got like Multani. Because Multani's an elemental. Yo. Well, you should build this on Moto. Risen Reef from Zendikar's Royal. No, they killed Rankle. Dude, how they had double lava co Oh my goodness. Alright, I gotta hit my fourth, uh... I gotta hit my fourth thing off the top. You know, actually, if I hit a claim to fame, that's lethal. Claim to fame is lethal, because I claim the Arkham's Vessel, and then I fame the demon. So, yeah, that's... That'll be it. Why did they not attack? Are they concerned with me killing them? Claim to fame, come on. Give it to me. Stitch your supplier. Oh, I can get back. Oh, Kroxa is going to be great. 
Drugs is gonna be so good. Exile Swamp, Mountain, Land, Land, Stitcher Supplier. Not gonna kill them because they can discard a land. Or they have to discard a non land. Yeah. Leaf can druid. You saw a very similar combo, Vessel Lurus combo in Arena. Very cool. True. State based actions don't check until the flicker resolves. You've been having fun with Soul Tie 5 color Starks Mutate. What is Starks? That the. Uh... I don't know who Starks is. Master Waves leaves play and comes back on the same effect. Yeah, that makes sense. I can see that making sense in my head. Oh, dang. They bopped her dome. All right, that's it. Yeah, Mana Screw really slowed us down there. That's unfortunate, but it is what it is. We've been getting Mana Screwed all day long, so I'm used to it. And especially me being named Marin MTG, I just naturally get Mana Screwed because I am Marin. And if you're, like, if, if you're not me, congratulations, you won't get Mana Screwed, but I am Marin. And you know what? Marin gets Mana Screwed. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to bring in, you know, Necromentia is not awful because like, it seems like Omnath or like Zendikar's Royal are like their main pieces. Uh, they, they weren't very aggro. So Liliana Waker of the Dead doesn't seem bad. Or, um, and Noxious Grasp isn't, awful i mean it doesn't do a lot i don't care so much about their creatures in fact i'm actually going to even cut dread war i don't even think i want push like i don't even think i want removal like their deck is like doesn't care about it um duress isn't awful either Kalidus is fine but not insane i don't think i need removal let's just run it like that Try to hand disrupt them. Starix Auspicious. What is this card? I'm going to look it up. Auspicious Starix. Oh, this guy. I thought you were talking about like a legend, like a commander. Like I thought you were talking about a commander deck. Would you like to play first? Yes, I will. Um, again, I'm stuck with Varkin's Vessel in hand. I gotta go, this is on my grave. But with double Kroxa trigger and like duress, like I can really slow him down. I'm gonna keep it. Do I keep it? Oh, it's a little iffy. Cause like, you know, I need to hit my land drops to get croaks online and the rest will not whiff probably. Um, double croaks would trigger. Like, I'm going to keep it. It's, it's, it's awkward. It is awkward and it might not do anything. But I'll have enough stuff in my graveyard to get Kroxa back. My mana base is a little bit slow, but it's fine. All right, Duress. Wow, it whiffed. Wow, they had so much non-creature stuff, like Burn Spells and Zendikar's Royal, and they only have like a few elementals. All right, Thoughtseize. Got to make sure I take the relevant thing here. Take the Risen Reef.
Uh, let's fetch a mountain here because I need double red for Kroxa. Okay, here comes this guy. I get a free attack here because they are not going to want to put this in my grave. Yep. All right. Foreboding ruins. Say no. Roxa. Get a trigger. Yeah, it's it's the it's the cascade thing. The auspicious Starks is the cascade thing. I remember I played with it in draft. Been very busy this month. Oh, I thought it said this mouth. Se sever trespasser, sever trespasser strikes, and the yard jobs are getting left a lot of jobs open. I'm tired, but I'm making this money. Keep working hard. Gotta survive somehow. Wait, what do they lava coil? Did they exile something from my grave? I'm one short of getting back Kroxa here. When you put Paradise Druid into your mutated creature, it has hexproof. It lets you keep putting more stuff in it. Yeah, that makes sense, but it becomes non-hexproof when it taps. That's a downside. All right, Kroxa is coming out next turn. I think you might just end the game. I mean, Underground Champion can block it a few times, but I'm still going to be getting my triggers, which is all that matters. They hit a temple off of their Risen Reef to grow their Underground Champion even more. All right, we're losing time, Krog, so we've got to get you out quick, or else that thing's going to get too big. They had another one. Oh my goodness. If they hit their land drop next turn, it might just be over. kind of want to block I want to get that in my grave for if I had a Luris all right croaks of time red black red black exile everything that isn't Arcfiend's vessel Attack. Their stuff's on four now. Yes, I knew they were going to get an embodiment of spring. I was like, I was thinking it in my head. I'm like low-key psychic. Okay, that thing is uh, five power now, so they can double block that on the Risen Reef. And Croxa will die. I still get my trigger and I will shrink that thing and you know it's not good but it might be worth oh man I am getting flooded so they're likely double blocking oh they're just chumping okay I'll take that I got my trigger that's what I wanted They're, they're screen sniping you. Obviously, it took out all their duress targets. Oh no, Zendikar's royal off the top. Please give me Luris. Please. Duress? Well, it's a little too late for that, isn't it? At one point, are they going to double block? They have to kill Kroxa here. Like, they absolutely are required to kill Kroxa here. They have to double block. Only single blocking? Dude, you're dead to one more trigger. All right, I'm dressing literally just to get a card in my graveyard for Kroxa later. If 
Thunder King away. Oh no, it's got haste. Oh no, it's getting back Risen Reef. This thing's about to get morbidly obese. But still, nothing gets around the Kroxa attack next turn, and Kroxa just triggers and wins. You gotta get, like, a non-land card into your hand. Which is the reason why I probably should have saved the Duress. But I didn't think about that. So if Risen Reef hits a- okay, it hit a land. It hit a land. It's getting a lot more. They got their combo online. All right, here we go. Let's see at what point they're going to whiff. But they're going off now. Oh, they did whiff. But they can attack with Thunderkin and get back Risen Reef to keep on going off. Yep, triple trigger keeps on doing it. Yeah, they're 100% going to get Croak's uh, bait here. That is unfortunate. Yeah, they have a million cards in hand. I think it's just over. No way I'm coming back from this. They're going to have lethal on board as well. All right, well, we went from getting mana screwed to a little bit flooded. That's unfortunate, but can't do anything about it. It happens. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Monday. So you might notice I'm talking a little bit quieter. That is because it is three in the morning. I don't want to wake anyone up. Anyways, we're speeding up the next two rounds for today, and I like to start with the longest round in the entire stream. This first game was against the mirror match, except um, mine was kind of a brew, and theirs was more the kind of list you will see everybody playing, um, which is the list you can find online with the Dreadhorde Arcanist and the Village Rights, which is what this deck was based off of, the Village Rights variant. But I took some things from that deck and took them out and replaced it with other stuff that I wanted to try out. And so this is this is the normal version we're going up against right now, except the one thing I see that's different is that they have Fiend Artisan. And Fiend Artisan seems like a really cool addition to that deck because it gets pumped for each creature card in your graveyard. And if you're self-milling yourself a bunch with Stitcher Supplier and some other stuff, that could be a really cool thing to do. And I like that a lot, and I feel like that is something that I would put in here if I built this deck again, because it's, it's a really fat creature. And you can also use it as a sack outlet sack your stitcher suppliers and turn them into dreadhorde arcanists now i think that what they did is they replaced young pyromancer with fiend artisan which is something that was that was also in my thought process of replacing young pyromancer it seemed like they had the same exact idea i did but instead of you know like wrinkle and all this other stuff that i put in they put um you know the fiend artisan which is a pretty cool thing to do as well and uh, they barely got there uh, in the last game, or in game number one. It was super close, down to the wire. Um, but they perfectly had something very specific to hit off of their Dreadhorde Arcanist that just got there. And they were at a super low life total. It was like one of those moments where it's like, this turn, either I'm going to win or they're going to win. And they had it perfectly. Um, but game number two, I get to bring in Leyline of the Void. And this is something that these decks normally don't run in the sideboard, but I put it in the sideboard because I think it's a really good card in Pioneer right now. And uh, it's I, you might have seen in the la last week we played Leyline of the Void against this deck before, and it completely destroyed them. And I actually won on a mulligan to zero against this deck before, mulliganing all the way down to one, keeping just the Leyline, putting it into play, and then having a zero card hand. And I still beat them i don't know how i did it might have been just pure luck but that is how hardcore leyland of the void shuts that deck down if you keep that deck without a graveyard there's really not a whole lot they can do and the same sort of thing was happening i would just mulligan until i find a leyland of the void and we would just get there and i think this matchup 
we didn't even go to game three because the opponent was very, very low on time on the clock and they just didn't have enough time to get to game three. But Leyland of the Void would have absolutely... It was really cool if that was there. And now we're going on to the second and last game. And this was against um, Boros Gideon's. Uh, the Gideon Glorious and Taking Turns deck. And now, here's a little example of how all the games were going. Like, you, as you might know, if you've been watching the channel for a while and seen Speed Up Sessions, you know that I do not like to include Mana Screw games in videos. I usually cut those. I don't think that they make for good content when you don't do anything. And you might have noticed earlier in this video, I did keep a Mana Screw game. And, and this game was Mana Flood. And then game number two was Mana Screw. But I couldn't just cut everything. Like, I don't want to give you guys some illusion that this deck got an amazing record. Because all of the losses with this deck were Mana Screw. Slash Mana Flood, maybe once or twice, but a majority of the time it was Mana Screw. And so I couldn't just cut all the losses and be like, guys, we went 3-0. Because it wasn't like that. There was losses. They were Mana Screw. It is completely out of our control. There's, there's no saying for sure that we would have won if we didn't get mana screwed, but I'm just saying there's a much better chance. As you can see in this next game, we had a mulligan down to six, and we had a one lander, and I wasn't going to go down to five. Especially against a deck like theirs, where we need a lot to overwhelm them. And so, yeah, mana screw happens. It is completely out of our control. And, uh, you know, if you play this deck again on another day, I'm sure you can get a good record. Or, rather, if I play this deck on another day, I'm sure I could get a great record. Um, but, you know, Mana Screw happens, and it doesn't matter what deck you're playing, it doesn't matter what matchup you have. You might hear me repeat this in the outro, but you could be playing the absolute best deck in the meta versus the absolute jank that a two-year-old brewed. And if you get Mana Screwed, they're going to beat you. It literally does not matter what deck you have or what matchup you have or anything. If you get Mana Screwed, that is it. So if there's a really cool deck that you like, don't get discouraged just because you don't draw lands one day. Keep at it. Keep on playing. Maybe you get Mana Screw the next day as well. Keep pushing along. And maybe the next day you'll draw all the right amount of lands and you'll do good. Anyways, with that being said, we are ready to go on to the wrap up. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. So we ended up with three total wins. And oh my goodness, we got Mana Screwed so much. It was insane. So I feel like this deck is capable of a lot more than we just showed. Um, although the deck didn't do bad at all. Like, it, I love the, just the overall resilience of it because it's so graveyard based that even if everything dies, in one way or another, we can get it back. Although, one time we did sideboard in Kolagon's Command, and it worked out pretty good. You know, even like, as just a sideboard. And so, it might be worth trying to slot that somewhere in the main deck, because if we stitch a supply or whatever and mill over a Luris or a Rankle, we really want it, we can get it back with K-Command and kill something. Good value. It is quite clunky doing that, but we are running 24 lands and somehow didn't draw much of it at all. <laughs> it's a thing, though. I really don't see what else I would change about this list because I really, I, I was brewing up for a bunch of hours. Like I was brewing this deck for like three and a half hours when I did brew it. So I, I really got it to the point where I don't think I would change anything else. So I feel like I would just run it again like this and just get better land luck because it was all in the land luck today. Um, but the Arcfiend's Vessel was super sweet. It's just a really big threat when it's in your graveyard. Your opponent has to watch out for any time you're going to find a Luris. And the Croak Cell was amazing. And there's nothing wrong with that at all because it's just like every single time when you get to four mana, he's there and he's castable. Rankle is cool when you have to get your Arcfiend's Vessel out of your Battlefielder hand and put it into your grave. And at the same time, when you have a Sackable like Citrus Supplier or Arcfiend's Vessel, you can then make your opponent sack a creature and it's super good for disruption and making them discard cards and keeping on theme with our discard plans. So I really like Wrinkle, but maybe it's worth cutting down to a three of um, to free up a slot because, you know, he is a, a four drop and, and um, you know, you're bound to, by the time he gets four mana, you're bound to like maybe hit two of Wrinkle, two Wrinkles in your hand by at that time. And that did happen a couple of times because he is clunky. So 
If it was three drop or less, I could justify four, but he's a four drop. But then again, the mono black aggro decks run a place at a wrinkle because he's that powerful. So it's up to you. Scrap Heap Scrounger was honestly a throw in because I was thinking, oh, we're going to mill over them and I can get them back. And it did play out okay sometimes. It is really aggressive, but I guess you could also consider Scrap Heap Scrounger a free slot for brew ability. Maybe you can go more heavy on the Call of the Night Howler or whatever that card's called that I can't remember the name of. If you want to go heavier on reanimation, maybe find more ways to self-mill yourself. I was thinking Meyer Triton, and Meyer Triton definitely seems like a solid plan. Uh, maybe I would cut the three Scrappy Scoundrels and one Wrinkle and run a place out of Meyer Triton. And that, that seems pretty good to me, because it also has Death Touch and stabilizes you by gaining you life. So in those situations where you are getting a little bit mana screwed, you can hold down the fort pretty well with the guy like that. And so I guess that's about it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button down below if you did. And subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Let me know, Doug, you want to see in the comments down below. Go check out the social media links down below, as well as a link to Twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream our Magic the Gathering gameplay all day on Monday, and we stream variety through the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday, if you want to see me play some other games. If you want to try this, if you want to try today's deck out for yourself, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off, and you can rent today's deck on Magic Online and give it a try. And if you want to pick up the deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. A special thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon. It is because of you guys, the channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. If you'd like to support on Patreon as well, the link is down below. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.